what extracurriculars mean for students and student advocacy. Um, to me, extracurriculars are such a massive part of schools today. School would be so boring if we just went to school every day and learned. I mean, as horrible as that sounds, no. But like, it gives us something to look forward to at the end of the day. And extracurriculars are a much bigger part of school than it see like than it's made out to be. And so many schools are getting rid of extracurriculars and music and sports, and it's a really big problem. Um, and so that is what like me especially would advocate for and so now to start what is the one thing that students want students want to be heard I mean every single student has so many ideas and so many opinions every student wants to be heard no matter if they're shy outgoing they still have those opinions they still want people to know those opinions regardless of if they're shy it just depends on how they translate those opinions but every student has them so, and as students, what we want from our teachers is not for them to force out the opinions, but we want the teachers to open the door. I had a door animation, but I had a little bit of technical difficulties, so oh well. <laughs> um, but to open the door to believing in our opinions and believing in those opinions so that we are, feel confident to tell other people our opinions and share to other people what we believe. Now, we have a problem with education, and that's so many students are content in their own little bubble. So many students just live in that bubble, and they are comfortable in it, and they have their comfort zone, they don't want to come out of it. And we need teachers to unlock these thoughts. Once again, lock animation and disappear. Oh well, it's fine. We want teachers to unlock the thoughts, to create something, and to, to, to share our opinions. So now, what do we believe in? And simply, students believe in anything. We believe in anything. From something as prevalent in today's society, such as LGBT rights like Justin talked about, or politics, or religion, or economics like Joe is going to talk about, or something as personal, such as the importance of extra extracurriculars, or the importance of social media like Sam discussed. Um, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably, who went to the general session last night with the Q&A with Diane Ravage, when Diane Ravage said, we could judge schools just as well with their arts and their extracurriculars and their sports as we could with their test scores because that tells as much about a school mm -hmm. as it does their test scores. And that is exactly what I believe in. I, I, I mean, that was such an amazing point to me. And specifically, I believe in music. That is my thing. I'm a band kid through and through. Uh, Lester has told you guys that I am a trumpet player. I play trumpet in the marching band. and our wind symphony and our jazz ensemble, and it's a lot of fun. We are going to London in December for New Year's, so it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, oh, no, this my text. Um, oh, well, those would disappear, but what do extracurriculars mean for us? Extracurriculars mean that we have something to look forward to at the end of the day, as I said before. We get to leave school and go play our sport. We get to go play football. We get to go do, go in band. We get to go to basketball practice. It's something to look forward to. It's an opportunity to meet friends. In band, I've met so many people. There is 106 people in our marching band that I meet every day after school. And I bet about only 10% of them I would have known if I just seen them around class. I see so many people that I only see in band and we hang out every single day. We hang out on Saturdays all day for competitions and it's, it's just amazing. Um, it's something for us to work towards. To me, life would be so boring and so pointless if we didn't have something to work towards every single day. The opportunity for me to work towards playing music and making music and getting that piece and not knowing it and then working it up and playing it for people and playing it for people in London, like I said. It's just such an amazing opportunity, and it gives me something to do every day, something to work on, and it's just outside, it's outside of school. I practice trumpet every day for like 20 minutes to an hour. It, I mean, I work so hard for it, and just overall, what extracurriculars do for us is they make school more than just school, because school is meant for learning, and extracurriculars are learning, which is why they're related to school. You learn in your extracurriculars. You may not learn the quadratic formula in band, <laughs> like you do in math class, but you learn life skills, you learn how to make music, how to have friends, and it's such a big thing. And those points are what we advocate for. That is what I, I would advocate for. If I have to advocate for something in music, I'd choose one of those to talk about. So now, how can teachers foster advocacy? The two general things that teachers can do to create an environment 
or us as students would want to advocate, and that is freedom and kinship. Now, starting with freedom, simply put, restricting your students is just going to make them lose passion and whatever they want to advocate for. A student is not going to want to advocate for something if they aren't passionate about it. Because if you, if you told me, hey, tell me why football is great. Like, I mean, I watch football on TV. I'm a big Ravens fan, but I mean, that's not my biggest thing. I wouldn't be as interested in that, but I have such a big passion for band. If you ask a band kid about band, he could talk for like an hour about band. It's ridiculous. Justin loves to complain about that. <laughs> um, and so you don't want to restrict your students. You want to add, let your students advocate for what they want to advocate about. And I know that seems like a, such a dove thing, but you'd be surprised how every day in school, students have these ideas, but students say, no, you're doing this for your assignment today. This is what your nonfiction essay is going to be about, not what you want to write it about. It's, it's ridiculous, and it happens more than it should. And the other thing is kinship. No student is going to want to fight for their opinions if they're not comfortable with who is in their class. And teachers just need to create an environment where everyone feels comfortable and everyone is at least somewhat acquainted and like can say they're like some level of friends with pretty much everyone in the class. If I'm in a class where I don't really know anyone and I still don't know that person who sits on the other side of the room's name in the fourth quarter, I'm not gonna want to. I'm not gonna want to argue for my opinions. I'm not gonna want to share my opinions with them because then that's where judgments come in and all that bad stuff that students want to avoid, and especially shy students. They're not definitely not gonna want to share their opinions because oh, people might be judging them or something, and that is just a really big problem. So you need to make sure and create an environment. Have your students work socially and have all kinds of different. Um, like group assignments and move your students around and have them interact with everyone and get to know each other. And again, it seems really dull, but you'd be surprised how many classes you still don't know a couple kids' names in the fourth quarter. It's ridiculous. And it, it is a problem. And those are the classes that you don't, you aren't excited to go in for every single day. The, the classes I am excited to go in every single day for are the classes where my voice is heard and I have the freedom to share my voice, and I know everyone in that class, and I can hang out with people in that class. So now, this, and now how are we gonna write for passions? And simply, argumentative and persuasive writing is how students can fight in their writing. Um, you, if you, every student going through the public school system at some point is gonna have to write a few argumentative and persuasive writing. It might not be in whatever grade you teach, but every, or every student at some point will have to argue or persuade in their writing. And what better way to do it than to advocate for something you care about? Because that's all it is, all argumentative and persuasive writing is, is advocating for something, persuading someone to do something or arguing your point. So how, or, so you want students to embrace that and let them advocate for whatever they want. You don't want to give students a specific category because that goes to freedom. They're gonna lose the passion for it and they're not gonna be as interested and they're not gonna do their best work. But in argumentative persuasive writing, student, and with that advocacy, if you, if I have the chance to argue for why band is better than something, I will take it. And I, if I have that assignment, I will gladly do my best to work towards that and make that the best piece of writing I have ever created because it's something I care about. And you, I mean, you can have students share their writing with each other, and that goes back to the kinship. They share their writing with each other, and maybe someone else wrote about basketball and like basketball is their thing <coughs> I can talk about band and they can talk about basketball and there's like the pros and cons there I'm, you know we can be like hey I think basketball is better what's up or band is better what's up and they can be like hey I think basketball is better um, and then those both have in common extracurriculars which is what this overarching theme is about so you both can say this is why extracurriculars are important and just to wrap just to wrap it up, the keys to advocacy in your classroom, in any classroom, is if the student environment is set, students will be much more likely to advocate the classroom, and the three things you need are the kinship in the classroom, the friendship in the good environment, the freedom to advocate for whatever you want for and to write about what you want, and argumentative or persuasive writing is really just a good way to like attack whatever subject you want and really share your opinions and um, convince other people why your opinions are good. So. That's going to wrap it up for my portion.